Ladies and gentlemen, we are back again for another live mock draft with my younger brother Carson. Say hello to the people. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. All right, and like we did last time, we're doing a 12-team PPR mock draft. No kickers and defenses. They add too much variance to the game. Um, and I want to say that if you are a re returning visitor of the channel, just hit the subscribe button. It's free. And uh, make sure to like and comment. It is very helpful for the channel to grow. All Sounds right, so good. With that being said, Carson today is going to be picking from the two spot. I'm picking from the eight. Let's dive in. All right. Austin Eckler. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Well, I thought Justin Jefferson would be taken, so I'll happily take him here. It's kind of that simple, for me at least. There. Uh, similarly, I'm going to go with Cooper Cup here. I think he is... Uh, a little bit of above in tier in, in regards to Stefan Diggs being his next uh, line of competition. Sure. So I'm good with Cup there. I think this is one of the first years where I feel like I would take Jefferson at the one and Chase at the two and not even really think about doing anything else. And I think that they're just that elite of wide receivers. And then Cup has shown that eliteness before. So getting him at the eight is, is good. Yep. Um, on that same kind of thought line, I'm going to go with Garrett Wilson here. He's got the uh, upgraded quarterback, and we saw that he was uh, truly an elite target getter as a rookie. Yeah, I like that. All right, let's see. I know I'm about to get... I see a few options at running back that I like, so I don't need to bite on one of them right now if I have a preference here for a wide receiver. I... Th I It'd be cool to... I kind of like the idea of having Justin Jefferson and T. Higgins because then I have someone in that Vikings offense and Bengals offense. But I think I'm going to go with the clear wide receiver one for his team, assuming Michael Thomas doesn't have a resurgence, and uh, get Chris Olave. All right. And then team one takes Hurts and Stevenson. Ooh. I could take Higgins here too, but I think I'm going to go and take a running back or else it's going to be a long time. And I think I'm going to take Tony Pollard. He should be the clear RB1 there. He's great when he the few times he's had that role exclusively. And I like him over Brees Hall because Brees Hall might start slow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would almost uh, und undoubtedly expect Brees Hall to start slow with that ACL yeah. injury. Um, yep. Not too far behind him. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, right here I'm looking at there are... Quite a few running backs up at the top of the queue versus wide receivers. Um, I do like Calvin Ridley. I took him in the last draft that we did uh, back in uh, the number one slot. But I think I'm going to take the chance that he makes it to me. I like uh, Travis Etienne over Najee Harris, so I'm going to be taking him. I agree. I agree. A lot of running backs go. Happy to see that. Um, I will grab Calvin Ridley here as my third wide receiver to fill up my flex. Yeah, and I see uh, Alvin Kamara being taken at the beginning of the fourth. It became official as of yesterday. He's going to have a three-game suspension. Do you? How much do you think that's going to change his ADP? Do you think he's going to be higher on draft boards come late August, early September with that news? Yeah, I mean, well, think about think about our last mock draft. I took him at the six-seven turn in a 12 team so to see him going at the beginning of the fourth is uh, quite a jump up but i think it's it's warranted he is he's extremely talented still um he's getting an upgraded quarterback which will help his situation and yeah i think in general the three game you know kind of impact that you have to factor in is well worth it at this stage in the draft Got it. I almost took Justin Fields, but unless Team 1 is really being a bot, they're not going to steal him from me. So <laughs> I might take him with my second pick. And got some options here. I mean, Hawkinson looks great, but I don't really want Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson. So I might hold off on tight end a little bit longer and go ahead and get another wide receiver one for their team in uh, Terry McLaurin to be my flex. I like that. And you then, your lineup nicely so far. Yeah, I am. And I like... There's some good running back options here, but I think, honestly, it's too hard to pass up on what Justin Fields could bring to my roster. Yeah. Nice. So, there we go. Okay, Hawkinson makes it to me, which it looks like, based on his ADP, he's fallen quite a bit. 
Um, yeah. I am inclined to take that uh, that value. Mm-hmm. And also Justin Herbert being here is nice. Um, looking for who is at quarterback next beyond him. So Trevor Lawrence just went. That makes me a little nervous about passing on Herbert here. Yeah. Um, let me see. Actually, Although it could only be Team 12 taking him from you. But he's got two opportunities to do yeah. so. That's very true. I am gonna I'm gonna risk it just because I think the value at at tight end is probably a little stronger than the value at quarterback here. Um, uh, <laughs> now that I'm saying that, it does make me nervous. Um, gosh, I know that. Okay, I think it's more likely Hawkinson doesn't make it back to me than Herbert. That's why I'm gonna justify taking Hawkinson here. Uh, and I'll just live with the fact that Herbert goes here at the at the turn. There he goes. Yeah, he does. That's fair. Yeah, it's just, I, that is the game you have to play in these drafts. Yeah. All right, so looking at my team, I've got my flex filled. I do need a second running back. Um, Alexander Madison is here. I am going to go with him and pair, up, pair him up with his teammate, Hawkinson. I'm crossing my fingers right now. Okay. I'm happy. I want it at least. I mean, Dalvin Cook is your RB2. He'll be on a team likely whenever you're drafting, or at least hopefully if you draft late enough. But I was held in that hope that I had Madison. I almost took him with my fifth round pick. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go for Rashad White as my RB2, and I'm happy about that because I think it kind of dips off a little bit after him. Mm -hmm. So I'll take him. And then... I mean, I just need that tight end spot filled, and then I have my starting lineup filled, and I think that, I mean, I got some time. Well, there's no guarantee that Ingram Ingram could come back to me, so I might just snag him, snag him up here because I like him a lot more than a lot of these other options, so I'll go ahead and do that and just finish out my starting roster. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, fun to, it's fun to pick from the, the first few picks in the draft, isn't it? Yeah, it is good. Okay, so I've got three wide receivers here at the top that I all like for different reasons. Um, Tyler Lockett has always been a solid asset on his team. Uh, Mike Evans is a, a thousand-yard receiving machine. He's never not received for a thousand yards minimum on a season well and then jackson smith and jigba has that rookie upside obviously in a bit of a crowded uh receiving core with lockett and metcalf um but seattle is one of the most heavily reliant on three wide receiver sets so Mm -hmm. it's uh it's an interesting toss-up here i think honestly what i'm gonna do just because i think lockett and jigba can kind of cannibalize that role a little bit um i'm gonna go with mike evans here i think i'm locked it locked in for a thousand yard receiver and uh, i'm happy about that fair enough i think that him being a seventh round pick is kind of um taking into account that he had a slower season by his standards last season so i think it's still fine value yeah for sure so here i am going to i'm gonna take Tua a tongue by loa I gotta take a quarterback. I'm yeah. I'm fine with him if he stays healthy. He's honestly a really really good option if he does stay healthy. He's got great yeah. receivers, so that's who I'm rolling with. Yeah, he's certainly a solid um, QB one if you're going later on QBs. Let's see. Ooh, I'm not really loving any of these options. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could go Michael Thomas and just lock down that. Saints receiving core, but is that really what I'm trying to go for? Probably not. Um, and none of these running backs are super exciting either. Ugh. I don't know. This is not amazing right now. I think... Hmm. I don't like these options. Ugh. Okay. I think that... Yeah, it's not great. I'm probably going to go, I guess, A.J. Dillon just to give myself a third running back. Like You kind of know what you're going to get. He's going to get a decent amount of usage. He doesn't have a super high ceiling, but him being my RB3, I'm fine with. I'll sure that up right now. Um, I just want to warn you. you know, I mean, there is... 
I was just going to warn you, your options really haven't changed from the last pick to this one. So Yeah, that is very <laughs> true. Um, and I think, you know, more on Dylan. It's just like there are some question marks in that offense. So, I mean, if there's a reality where Aaron Jones gets a lot of receiving work and Dylan gets a lot of rushing work, it could be a fine value there. We saw that at times last season. Um, but there is some embedded inconsistency of that dual role being shared. And uh, I'm going to take... One of my guys, you know, Cortland Sutton, let's ride, as my fourth wide receiver. <laughs> okay. I think he's got great value there. And then Tim Patrick, I believe, tore his Achilles or something since we last recorded. So yeah. um, that just makes it even more, uh, even less depth behind Judy and Sutton, which I guess is good for them. It's not really a big difference for them, but um, just another reason to believe that they're going to get fed. So there you go. Yeah, that's fair. Um, okay, so I've got quite a few uh, running backs to pick from here and very few wide receivers before my next pick. So I'm inclined to take Gabe Davis. I'm going to go ahead and grab him as my fourth. And then I'm seeing a lot of non-running backs go. As I say that, they're all coming off the box. Yeah, um, three in a row. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so right here... For the sake of upside, because I think Khalil Herbert could be the starter, but he's got Deontay Foreman, and he has uh, Roshan Johnson to compete with in that backfield. Uh, you know, now, now that I say that I'm, I'm advocating for Devon A. Chain here because of the rookie upside, but he also has a crowded backfield. So it's really about uh, which offense do I believe in more, and for that reason, I'm going to go with Miami's running back in A. Chain. Fair enough. A lot of teams taking their second quarterback. That's interesting. Yeah, and, definitely uh, not, not recommended. Yeah, not necessarily. Okay, so, I mean, I might just keep on going wide receiver. This is kind of a similar strategy, a different team, but similar strategy to what I did in the last video. Um, let's see. I like... Hmm. I'm going to go Alan Lazard. I did it last video, too. I like his potential for where he's being drafted at. Two other wide receivers that were catching my eye went off the board. And let's see. I mean, if I had Christian McCaffrey, I'd be way more inclined to take Elijah Mitchell. And since I don't... The the one good thing, I guess, that's good about Tony Pollard and uh, Rashad White is that they don't have much behind them, but it kind of takes away the idea of going for handcuffs and i mean that's all right um yeah honestly so it's that, probably in your best interest to not be drafting handcuffs because there that's a roster spot that has to be kind of yeah it's true know, it does take up. up a roster spot but sometimes it makes for some simple picks <laughs> later on um mm -hmm. yeah i think you know i'll go sky more again even though i don't have um actually i disagree i'm going sky more okay indecisive this is a range in the draft where you're just trying to go with who you think has the best potential and sometimes that can be a very hard decision at least for yeah. me <laughs> yeah so i got uh rashad bateman looking at me not a fan uh darnell him. mooney not a fan uh pretty much no running backs in this range that really i mean at all that are interesting to me so i'm gonna go a little bit down the board here and grab rishi rice I think honestly he has the most upside of those three uh mm -hmm. just being on that uh kansas city chiefs offense yeah so now <laughs> we're on we're now now we're in a section where i can either take jonathan mingo um but i kind of feel like i should grab a fourth running back here instead um i did just take rice in the last round so that's kind of my flyer wide receiver for right now um mm -hmm. and on the off chance that khalil herbert isn't the starter it's going to be Deontay Foreman probably fair enough all right let us see I doing a lot of similar picks last draft last draft but hey if you have your guys you take them when you want them and it'll be okay so I think that that being said any news on where Ezekiel Elliott Cowboys not ruling out reunion of Ezekiel Elliott. I that did. That's as of six days ago. <laughs> That'd be well, 
I didn't want Pollard and Elliot, but with that, I guess I'll take them both, and that sounds fun. Although I hope that would never happen, um, just for Pollard's uh, value. That would be yeah. very disappointing and kind of surprising and seeing that for the first time right now. And I guess I'm going to keep on buying in on the uh, Packers offense a little bit. After already taking AJ Dillon a few rounds ago and taking Romeo Dobbs. So, in case they surprise some people, I got some shares in there, but it's probably <laughs> unlikely. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, okay, so I am going to grab Jalen Hyatt here with my first pick. Um, I love his upside. I mean, that, that receiving room is wide open in New York, so I'm happy with that. Uh, and then we'll see what comes to me for my last pick of the draft here. All right, so I can't lie. I was hoping that uh, Jalen Warren would make it to me. Uh, mm -hmm. At this range, honestly, like, there's not a whole lot to like. Um, no, there really I, isn't. <laughs> I don't need a backup quarterback. I don't need a backup tight end. So I'm looking at Chase Brown, Jerome Ford, which are both clear backups. Um, KJ Osborne, I really don't need that many more wide receivers. So honestly, I think I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna grab Leonard Fournette here. I'm gonna reach a little bit on him and yeah. uh, He's probably, like, it was either him or Clyde edwards Alaire who goes two picks before you. Um, it's just, you know, last round, taking a flyer, and I can cut him easily if it's uh, if it turns out to be a dud. That's fair. All right. I'm almost feeling like I just do the same rationale and go Kareem Hunt, and then it's very similar to my last draft. Although I think I took... Zeke and Fournette, but it's a similar strategy. Um, I'm also seeing Alec Pierce, who's randomly catching my eye. It's not like he had an amazing season last year, but he's going into his second season, but a lot of unpredictability with Anthony Richardson, and I already got plenty of wide receivers, so I'll just get my fifth running back in Kareem Hunt and hope that he lands on a team. That's great. Same for Zeke. That would be great for my team. But we'll see. I, I like how it turned out. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can go and recap first since you're picking ahead of me. Yeah, okay, so got my quarterback, my QB1 in Justin Fields. Um, I'll start, set him and, and set it and forget it every week with him um, as he goes into his third season. Yeah, hoping for him to continue to boom. I got Tony Pollard and Rashad White, kind of uh, new RB1s for their team and hopeful for them. And then my first round pick was Justin Jefferson, of course, so I got some, I'm happy about my receivers, Justin Jefferson. Chris Olave, Terry McLaurin, all wide receiver ones for their team. I like their upside. And then I got uh, Evan Ingram, who is kind of one of the last tight ends that I feel comfortable about, so I'm happy I got him. And then for running back depth, I got A.J. Dillon and Zeke and Hunt. So only one of my running backs on the bench is on a team currently, <laughs> but it's all right. And wide receivers kind of went with some of similar guys as last episode. Sutton, Lazard, Sky Moore. I like all of their potential. And then Romeo Dobbs, because I guess I am uh, going in on that Packers offense just a little bit in case they're good. Yeah, fair enough. So there you go. All right, so for me, I filled out my wide receiving core with Cup, Garrett Wilson, Calvin Ridley, Mike Evans, Gabe Davis, Rasheed Rice, and Jalen Hyatt. Um, I've got four really, really strong wide receiver options, I think, at the top half there. And I could certainly see myself trading one of those guys if they are kind of exceeding expectations early on, mm -hmm. uh, maybe for an upgrade at running back. I'm not as thrilled with my running back room of ETN, which I do like, uh, but Alexander Madison, I think, is uh, questionable in a PPR format. He doesn't catch a lot of passes, really. Uh, Devon A. Chain, Deontay Foreman, and Leonard Fournette. That, there's room for improvement there, for sure. Um, sure. I am happy that I grabbed Hawkinson at the value I did. I think that was good. And then, you know, I was kind of forced to go with Tua because a lot of teams here were taking quarterbacks, uh, you know, around me. You know, kind of being stuck in the middle of the draft, uh, that can happen. You can have gaps between your picks where the position you're looking for goes very often. So, uh, yeah, I'm okay with Tua. I hope I hope he stays healthy uh, for his sake, for the for the Dolphins' sake, um, and. You know, we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that those are our lineups. Uh, thank you all for watching. 
And remember, if you enjoyed the video, uh, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll be back with another one later this week. All right. Sounds good. And yes, we will. Peace out, everyone.